All right, uh, my name is Manu, I work for Meta and I work on the CI. I'm doing a live demo, uh, I'm a bit of a chicken, so you know, the demo got and stuff. So essentially the demo is printed in front of you. Um, this is a live demo on how to use the BPF CI. Um, you can, as you send a patch to the mailing list, the patch has been tested on the CI, but you can also actually bypass the mailing list and try your patches directly on the CI. So you can iterate and then start getting feedback once it works. So um, the, the link at the bottom, tinyurl.com bpf-ci-test, sends you to the documentation within the BPF uh, documentation on how to do that. The TLDR is you need to clone the kernel-patches slash BPF repo that we have on GitHub. You create your own fork, and from there you do a local clone. Um, you get an updated version of the BPF next underscore base branch. You create your own local branch. You make a great change, like adding a new line to the readme, uh, which <laughs> obviously needs to be tested. Um, great uh, commit message, LSFMM 2023, write CI test run. Push that to your GitHub branch, and then Typically, GitHub will give you a link to create a push, a pull request, which, when everything works, is able to merge like that. And as you click on create pull request, magic happened. Now you wait a bit, and there it's been picked up by the Google by the GitHub CI. And from there, you wait some time for build and self-test and stuff to happen. And eventually, you get the result directly onto your PR. And I guess that's pretty much about it, how to run the CI yourself. Do you have any questions? Um, good point. Um, Daniel wrote uh, automation to delete your patch if you don't touch it for a week or something like that. So you don't have to care much about it. But yeah. And this is not going to be merged anywhere. It's just uh, been tested. So I guess here. So first, we're going to, uh, to get all the builds. This takes somewhere in the eight-ish minutes on the uh, x86 and ARM um, architectures. A390X is a bit slower to run it. It takes about 10-ish minutes. Once everything is done here and it passes the build, then it's going to start running the test. And that can take between 10-ish minutes and uh, on S390X, close to an hour at the moment for some tests. And uh, what is the rate limit? The rate limit? Um, we have a limited amount of workers that do the, that do run the test, so essentially you're going to be limited by that. Your GitHub user is going to be limited in the first place also. Um, I guess this is for you to test, not for you to build a bot that hammers it. Uh, typically, you, you need to be approved to be able to run the test first. GitHub provides some switches. One is um, either you need to be approved, you need to be to have committed first. Um, I believe in some ways it reads what is in the kernel tree and find that you may have contributed to the repo. Uh, it didn't seem to work all the time. And there's another, another way which is essentially accept anybody that had a GitHub account for some amount of time, which kind of get rid of some bots that way. Do, do you know if I can filter, for example, I know that I'm, I care about X, 390X and I don't care about uh, yes. Um, so I don't waste so the resources. Essentially, what you want to do, you want to, as part of your commit, comment out. Well, just leave that line here. Okay. Uh, yeah, because and actually, I, I will recommend the resources we have. The S three ninety X are the most constrained. So if you don't really want to test on everything yet, and you just want to get quick signal, use ARM or x86, pretty much limit it, and you're going to wait less time too. Yeah. And then but once you're happy, get rid of 
to do. Mm. This is super useful because at some point I was trying to run um, there's like GitHub actions something something that you can run those locally. Mm -hmm. It didn't work for yeah, me. Yeah, the act stuff. Uh, no, yeah, the, the, the uh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. I tried to. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I wished it worked better because uh, it would like help in iterating faster. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, um, definitely try to avoid F three ninety X if you're just like send your first you know test, and once you're kind of happy, and then put it back in to get like full results. Uh, but this is the most constrained uh, resource we have at the moment. So uh, yeah. Well, I guess for that, we just have to go <laughs> somewhere here. Um, so once upon a time, so I guess, like, yeah, good point. We can we can get it from here. Like once everything has run, um, so I mentioned the build earlier on, and then you got all your tests. At the workflow level, you got like a quick summary of what potentially failed. Um, so you get it here. But let's say if you go and on a specific test, this is. I don't know why. Oh. Now it makes sense. <laughs> I was like, why well, you don't see the test failure? So here you see that essentially the net count, net CNT test failed. And if you expand it, then you get the actual output from the error. Um, back in the days, it used to be uh, long and easier to get that information from <laughs> back within all the logs. Uh, but yeah, so you get directly access to, to the information of what test failed. Um, there is some tricks I could try to document somewhere where you can. I'm not sure how that work if you're not a member of the repo itself, but you could get the artifacts that were used to build the VM and kind of rerun the VM locally if you want, so you don't have to go through all the iteration. But uh, I guess you know, just getting to use the CI in the first place is a good start. Uh, that's really cool. Uh, are you using your own runners? Yes. Um, it makes a big difference to use to run the runners on uh, on bare metal when you run QEMU, because um, we can use KVM. So yeah, uh, historically we used to use self-hosted runners that were still AWS VMs. Uh, we moved to using bare metal uh, machine where we put a bunch of runners. They have many co more cores when they want to compile and stuff. Um, I'm trying to work um, with Ilya on the S390X to improve that for, for them. Uh, we have got some performance issues there. Hopefully, we get to to train that, that number. Um, but yeah, yeah, we've we've been struggling running our CI on ARM. Um, so you know, because GitHub doesn't have like ARM machine yeah. search tool. Yeah. From my empirical test, it was faster to run QEMU for ARM on x86 than on ARM without KVM. So if you do full virtualization, it was faster to run it on an x86 machine. On, on x86 w with KVM, right? Well, it doesn't make, you don't have KVM because you are a foreign architecture. But let's say, I guess the emulation code is more optimized on x86 than it is on, on I didn't go deeply into the root, but that's my guess. You, you have to be a little careful with that because QEMU does not scale at all for full system emulation past like maybe four cores. So I don't know how many we're using, but uh, four. Okay, <laughs> at <So> most. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I, I I think it's not a big problem here in our use case. Um, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just like if we ever do want to have like a larger cluster of ARM ARM hosts, it might be better to run with a queue. So so I mean. Or if we want to run like more like t more in parallel and whatnot. Like yeah. RCR, yeah. RCE torture, or whatever may require more CPU. Yeah, RCE torture, or even even just like test progs with like more lo you know more parallelism. Yeah, well, I think yeah. I mean I think we want to be. Maybe we don't gain as much as we have at the moment. So Fair enough. let's say, it would be good enough like that. Maybe it's not like a requirement mm -hmm. at least. But good to have in mind, I guess, for <laughs> later. Um, Mano, do you know if. Uh, people will see logs actually if they don't yes, have access. Yes, we tested that last time. So you need to be logged in GitHub. If you're not, you just see the summary. Uh, I guess I think you you essentially see this this kind of view. Right. You can't expand that. But if you logged in, uh, they will see yeah. the whole log. Right? Yeah. What I'm not sure is about it's the artifacts. What I mentioned earlier on. 
I'm not sure you can download them if you're not a member of the repo. Um, and also, guys, uh, because you need to be approved uh, to execute the test, this is the reason why we wanted a uh, few people to try so we can approve you in bulk. Uh, yeah, I, I opened the, um, the, the restrictions, so if you're not a brand new GitHub user, I think you should be fine. Uh, you tell me. Um, the um, artifacts, I believe, are here, yes. If you go in the uh, summary page, so here you get all the outputs of, um, I mean, the, the GitHub UI is kind of, you know, created for a rather generic use case and catered to many people, so. Um, but yeah, here you got the artifacts, which I can download. Um, I didn't create a separate account to see if I could you know, access it. But essentially here, um, what you've got are the uh, self-tests in the kernel that, are, that have been compiled. Um, you, I could document that, but from the test script, you can see where the image has been downloaded from, and then you can create, your, you can essentially create them. Do those artifacts expire somehow? Yes. I think 90 days is set in the UI. I didn't check. Even the logs eventually expire. I think after nine, some time, like they, they just, you, you see the results of what you see on the left pane, but you don't see the details from, from that page, for instance. You don't see that anymore. All right, um, tomorrow we'll be uh, going into, into a bit more detail about what has been going through the CI for the last year. Um, but yeah, so you can play. We wanted to make a live demo, but it took about 10 minutes to clone the repo. Um, so <laughs> it's easier to just show them that. All right. Perfect, thank you so much Thanks for the demo. <laughs>